and turn in your Old Testament to the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. I'm going to look at one verse this morning and then use that as kind of a springboard into the message. <clears throat> Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and the very first verse. Ecclesiastes 3, 1. Let's all stand together. If your neighbor does not have a Bible, allow them to look on with you. And let's say the, the verse together out loud in unison. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1. Let's say it together. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Let's say it one more time. There is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we want to thank you so much for being our God and being so good to us. Thank you for a, a great week that we had this week. And uh, Lord, thank you for the, particularly for the souls that came to know Christ as Savior. Thank you for the seed that we were able to sow. And uh, Lord, we, we pray your blessings upon this time together in your word. We ask, Father, that you quiet hearts, that you would help us to be able to focus on what thus saith the Lord. Uh, may our hearts be tender. May our hearts be open to the Spirit of God speaking to us this morning through your word. We ask, God, that, that uh, you would uh, work in a way that only you can work. I ask, God, that you would have control of my lips, of my tongue. Uh, Lord, may I say things that are pleasing and honoring to you and in no way bring you any reproach. But may the Lord Jesus Christ be lifted up and glorified and all is said and done. We pray your blessings upon this time together. And as you speak to our hearts, may our heart's desire be that we say yes to you. For us in Jesus' name that we pray. And all God's people said, amen. amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> the, the verse says to everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Um, a season is a, is a period of time when changes take place. Uh, every year we have, we have four seasons, at least we do up here. Down in Brazil, they pretty much have two seasons. I, I, guess, they, I guess they break it up into four. They have a rainy season, they have a colder season, they have a in-between season, they have a, a hot summer season, and theirs is, of course, reversed from ours. But uh, I, get a, I get a kick out of it because Joel is one that has always been uh, affected by the heat immediately, and so where does God call him? God calls him to Brazil. And, uh, but then on top of all that, <clears throat> now when he comes back here, he freezes to death because he's used to all that, that warm weather down there. But, uh, but, but we, have, we have four seasons, and in each, each of the seasons that we have up here give us exactly what we need. We, not only do we have summer, fall, winter, and spring, but we need summer, fall, winter, and spring. All four of those seasons are necessary. Uh, you may enjoy some of the seasons more than you enjoy others, but, but uh, uh, all of them are necessary, and you never know how long they'll be. You never know when they'll start. You'll never know when, they're, when, they're, when they'll end. We, we've had, I, I, re, I remember one time when we were in Green Bay, this was back, I believe, either the late 70s or the early 80s, and it may have been occurring here as well because I've noticed that whatever weather they get there, we get it about the day after. <clears throat> but uh, one of the things that, that happened was in the middle of December, or excuse me, the beginning of December, the very first week of December, uh, we were celebrating our, uh, the anniversary of our church, and uh, uh, we had some preachers in for that week. And, and the, the, the weather was 70 degrees in Green Bay, Wisconsin, the very first week in December. And that doesn't usually happen. So sometimes the different things happen within the seasons, but overall, the seasons occur four times a year. And um, uh, each of those seasons help you appreciate different things and the things that occur during those seasons. For instance, uh, when you have a windy day, and we've had a lot of those around here lately, when you have a, a windy day, 
it really helps you appreciate the calm days. I, I don't know about you, but I can't do a whole lot in the wind. <laughs> wind can, can really ruin a lot of the activities that you have. When you have a rainy day, uh, it makes you appreciate the, uh, the dry ones. When you have a super, super dry period, it makes you appreciate the rain. And, and so on, and so I don't think anybody appreciates the snow up here, but nonetheless, uh, the, the, uh, the snow makes you appreciate the, the summer. And, and uh, it, it keeps life exciting. I like variety, I really do. I can't, I can't imagine being in a place where there really isn't much change in the seasons. I like the change of the seasons. Now, I have, I have some favorites, uh, I think like everybody does. I, I really like spring. I love it when things turn green. I like to, to uh, get up in the morning and go out and see that, the, that overnight, it seems, that the, the grass has turned a brighter green and, and uh, it may have been even been brown depending upon the winter before. <clears throat> and, and all of a sudden it just turns green. You see the buds on the trees and so forth. Uh, that's, that's always a blessing. Uh, and I like fall. I love, I love the colors. Uh, I, I put up with the, with the winter and try to tolerate the summer. But, uh, but what, what that always does is it gives you something to look forward to. Oh, you know, one of the things that we, you always ought to be looking ahead to something. And uh, in, the, in the summer, I look forward to the fall. And in the winter, I look forward to the spring. And, uh, and, and so seasons give you things to look forward to. Just like there are seasons uh, in the, the climate and in the weather, there are seasons in the Christian life. And in the scriptures, I found that there are seven different seasons that God has. And it's good for us as God's people to be familiar with those seasons and to know what they are and to, to, to look for them when they come. Um, this, this message is going to be in two parts. I'm not going to do all seven of them this morning. I'll do three of them this morning and then I'll do the, the, the remaining four tonight. But let's take a look at these seven seasons and we'll look at the first one over in Psalm 1. Your Ecclesiastes just back up to the book of Psalms. Go to the very first Psalm, Psalm 1, and we'll look at verses 1 through 3. Psalm 1. Verses 1 through 3 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper." This is, uh, this is the season of fruit bearing in the Christian life, the season of fruit bearing. And it's a short season. Uh, it's, you know, when you, when you look at the, the season of fruit bearing in, in, uh, on the earth, uh, it's, it's really, depending upon what it is you're growing, it could be one month, it may be as many as two months, but in comparison to the rest of the year, it's really a, a short, short period. And so fruit isn't born uh, all, all year long. It's, it's sporadic. It comes at different times. And it's, it's preceded by some things. If you're going to have fruit, it doesn't just pop up. It pops up because, because some things have been done. Some things have taken place before that fruit uh, uh, is born. Uh, first of all, you have a, you have a dormant time. You have a, a winter time that, uh, where, where nothing really is happening. Everything is seem, seemingly asleep. Uh, in the Christian life, this is time when things are, are quiet and you spend time in meditation, you spend time in preparation, you spend time thinking about the things of God. Uh, in in this, this scripture, it talks about the, that his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. One of the things that, that God wants us to do 
during those quiet times is to, to think about the Word of God and think about the God of the Word and spend some time meditating and thinking about what God has done for us in the past. One of the things that David thought about oftentimes were the works of God. And not just the works of God for the nation, for Israel, but what God had done in his own personal life and how God had been a blessing to him. So that's, the, that's a dormant time. Then there's, then there's a pruning time. Go with me over to John chapter 15. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John in your New Testament, John 15. And in John 15, look with me down in verse 2. John 15, the, particularly the first part of the chapter, I call the abiding chapter because it talks about abiding in Christ. And uh, in John chapter 15, verse 2, Jesus says this, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. This is a time of purging. This is a time of purifying. And uh, God says that, that, that uh, every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth much, much fruit. Uh, and more fruit. Uh, God, God works in our hearts and, and does the purging. Sometimes that purging is rebuke. Sometimes that purging is correction. Uh, it's at times when he gets our attention on things that have to be taken care of in our life so that the fruit can come forth in fullness. And, and uh, it's, you know, whenever, that, that's the reason why I, I often admonish you to anytime God speaks to your heart about something don't drag your feet about taking care of it if he draws your attention to something that needs to be added to your life or he draws attention to something that needs to be taken out of your life or there's a rebuke that he delivers to your heart and soul and you know the the, the neat thing about times like this about preaching is that God could be working on your heart and nobody else will know it. You'll know it and God will know it. And that's really who, who counts, you and God. Nobody else needs to know. If it's a private thing, you just take, take care of it and, and deal with it. But whenever God begins the purging process, pay attention and respond properly to that purging because that's necessary for fruit bearing. Then, there, then there's watering. There's watering. You gotta, you gotta not only have a dormant time, you've gotta have a purging time, you've also gotta have a watering time, a time when, when uh, the, the plants are watered and gets nourishment. Go with me to Psalm 126. Psalm 126. In order for us to bring forth fruit, there has to be some watering that goes on. Psalm 126, and look down in verses 5 and 6. Psalm 126, 5 and 6 says, They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Uh, this, is a, this is the watering of a broken heart. This is a heart that, that cares for others that uh, is, is broken about sin, is broken about the lost condition of others, and, uh, and, and, and therefore uh, has some tears. Uh, this, is, this is absolutely necessary. We've got to have a tender heart, or God cannot bring forth fruit in our lives. And one of the ways that that, that takes place is by us having an open heart, and a heart that is, is tender to the things of God. Then, there, then there's another thing that's necessary in order for bringing forth fruit. And go back with me to John 15 again, where we were just a moment ago. John 15. And look down at verse 5. John chapter 15. And look down at verse 5. John 15, 5 says, I am the vine, Jesus is speaking, ye are the branches, he that abideth in me and I in him. The same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. This is the process of abiding. And uh, the, 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 uh, uh, 
the vine and the branches have to have to abide. And if there's there's no abiding, there's no there's no fruit. You and I have to abide in Jesus Christ. And and all that simply means is, is it means getting as close to him as you possibly can and staying true to him and being faithful to him and being consistent in your Christian life. I think one of the, the, greatest, the, the greatest needs in, in the life of a Christian is consistency in our relationship with Jesus Christ. If there's inconsistency, there will be little or no fruit bearing. But fruit bearing comes from having a consistent day-by-day -day relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, that, that, means, that means personal discipline. That means spending time in the Word of God ourselves. Uh, that means spending time in prayer. Uh, nothing can substitute for a consistent, faithful walk with God. And, and that's something that's between us and the Lord alone. There's really no one else who knows uh, how consistent or inconsistent your, your walk with God is, except for you and God. And, and uh, there needs to be a determination in our hearts. If you want to bear, bear fruit, if you want to see that season of fruit bearing, it's, it's important that we spend time with the Lord. Um, you know, the, the Lord Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Uh, he told that to his disciples. In other words, if they would abide with him, they would, they would see some fruit. If they stuck by him, uh, they would see fruit. And that's what's necessary for us to have a, a consistent life of walking with God and paying attention to those things that God points out in our lives. Another thing that's, that's necessary for bearing fruit is that the, the, the plant needs to have a proper diet. And of course, that proper diet is the Word of God. We need to spend time uh, in the book. We need to spend time in God's Word. And then it, not only a, a right diet, but a right climate. I remember years ago, I heard a message by a, by a preacher that's since gone home to be with the Lord. His name was Don Camp. And Brother Camp preached a message on diet and climate, two things that are absolutely essential for fruit bearing. Uh, you got to have the right diet. You got to have you got to be feeding on the right stuff. And one of the things that obviously we need to be feeding on is the word of God. We need to be feeding on fellowship with one another. We need to be feeding on obedience uh, to his word. And, and uh, then the, the second thing is climate. In other words, surrounding ourselves with the right kind of people and the, the right kind of places. Uh, you know, it, that's why I, I'm convinced going to church is so important. I have, I have noticed something over the years. Um, I am thankful that right after I, not right after, but when I, when I, about six months after I got saved, I started getting faithful to church. And I was, I was told immediately, if you want to grow, you've got to be here for Sunday school. You've got to be here for Sunday morning. You've got to be here for Sunday night. You've got to be here for Wednesday night. When, when the doors are open for visitation, you need to be here for that. And that, that's what, you know, that was a, my, my first and initial contact with the Christian life was you've got to be consistent when it comes to church, if you want to grow and if you want to bear fruit. You know, I, I found that, that to be so true. I found that those that are consistent in, in surrounding themselves with the right people. I, I thoroughly enjoyed uh, Vacation Bible School th this week. And I, I always do enjoy it, but boy, this week, just for some reason, there was such a cooperative effort. Yeah, we had some, some glitches and some bumps in the road along the way, but overall, it was good. And there was a real, real cooperative spirit uh, in, 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 uh, among the, the church folks. And that translated into the kids, and the kids were extremely well-behaved, I thought. Uh, in fact, uh, Brother... Brother Gear even made mention several times at how well the kid, the children paid attention. And he got up here, sometimes he would, he would speak to them for anywhere to between 30 and 40 minutes. And he didn't lose them. I mean, they, they stuck with them. And I really believe that one of the reasons why the kids were good was because the adults and the young people that were working 
were good too. They, it was just a good atmosphere in this place. You know what that does? That helps you grow. That helps you bear fruit. Uh, you've got to have the right diet and you've got to have the right climate. And all of these things contribute together in order to bring forth the this, this season of fruit bearing. Now remember, the season of fruit bearing in comparison to the rest of the year is relatively short. And it, it'll happen more in a, on a sporadic basis. But if you want it to take place throughout the rest of the year, you have got to be consistent, and particularly consistent in the area of abiding in Christ. Then the, the, the second season that's found in Scripture, take your Bibles and turn to Ezekiel chapter 34. In your Old Testament, book of Ezekiel, Book of Ezekiel, chapter 34. In Ezekiel 34, look with me down in verse 26. Ezekiel 34, verse 26. It says, And I will make them and the places run about my hill a blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down in his season. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the season of showers. And these are, these are showers of blessings that God rains upon us. And they come in seasons. You don't get showers every single day. But when they're necessary and when they're needed, God makes sure that they come. They're not continual so that you, can take, so, so that you don't take them for granted and you appreciate them when they come. But, but I, I have noticed, you know, over the, over the years, you look over your shoulder after you've been saved for a while, and uh, you, you really can get impressed with the fact that God knows exactly when to bring the blessings. He knows exactly when to bring the encouragement. He knows exactly when to bring the help. And he is very faithful in doing just that. Uh, sometimes those blessings trickle. Uh, it's kind of like rain showers, you know, you, there's times you go out and it's just a mist. It's just a mist. It doesn't even seem like real rain. Uh, and then other times, it, it, like we've had here in the last couple of weeks, you'll get what, what, what we used to call gully washers, you know, where it just, it just comes down in a torrent. And uh, uh, the, the blessings come at different times in different ways, in, in different intensities, but they refresh. They, they, God, God knows when we need that refreshment, when we need that encouragement, when we need that help. They don't last forever, so don't expect them to. Um, one, of the, one of the things that, that I had to learn in the Christian life is that when you go to a special meeting or when you have something like Vacation Bible School or there's a special service that you have at church or God just pours out a special blessing during a particular time. We expect sometimes that thing to just keep coming and coming and coming and coming. You can't live on the mountaintop forever. You just can't. And uh, God doesn't want us to, and he doesn't expect us to. But when those showers are necessary, God is faithful. And he brings those showers uh, to us. They, they uh, as I said, they don't last forever. And, and sometimes when they come, we don't even recognize them. You know, the Bible tells us that uh, daily he loads us with benefits. And you've heard me speak about those benefits and how that, that that's what the Bible says, is there are benefits every single day uh, that, God, that God gives us. He doesn't just give them to us. In the book of Psalms, it says he loads us with them. But you say, well, my, my life isn't loaded with benefits. Yes, it is, because God says that, that, that it is. You just aren't recognizing it. And oftentimes, that's the way with the blessings. The blessings come, and we don't, we don't even see them. We don't even recognize them. And, and we need to, 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 to realize that they, they, they are there and they, they've come from God. And, and God determines when the blessings come. Um, you know, we're not the ones that bring the blessings. 
God is the one that brings the blessings, and he brings them in his time. The thing with a season is that you don't always know exactly when it's going to come. You have a pretty good idea. Obviously, you've got, you've got the, the sense of when, when uh, summer, fall, winter, and spring take place. But again, they overlap. Uh, sometimes one season is later. Sometimes another season is early. That's the way it is with the blessings of God. But the, the blessings of God always come exactly when we need those blessings and exactly in the timing of God. And, and I've, I've watched it over and over again. We, we just recently had, had a kind of a, a trying time here uh, in our home. And it was just something that, that, that took place. And one of the things that, one of the verses that God brought across my soul during that time was the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away from the book of Job. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The truth of the matter is, whether you get the showers of blessings or not, God is always a blessing. <laughs> you know, he always is. You can always go to him. You want a blessing, go to his word. You want a blessing, spend some time talking to him. You can always get, in that respect, you can always get a blessing from God. But there are, there are showers of blessings, and he brings those at times that are needed. And then the last season that we're going to look at this morning is a season of fulfillment. Go to Luke chapter 1. Matthew, Mark, Luke, third gospel. And Luke chapter 1, and look down in verses 18 through 20. Now, the, this, is, this is the angel who is replying to Zacharias. Zacharias was John the Baptist's uh, father, and he, he was telling him about the, the, the birth of John the Baptist. And uh, Luke chapter 1, verses 18, 18 through 20, verse 18, says, And Zacharias said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. So he was, he was skeptical, to say the least, about the birth, uh, about his wife uh, having, a, having a baby. In verse 19, And the angel answering said, said, uh, said unto him, I am Gabriel that, that stand in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee, and to show thee the, uh, these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. This is a season of fulfillment. And what, what he's speaking of here is that there was a promise given to Zacharias. And that promise was going to be fulfilled, and it was going to be fulfilled in God's season. Uh, often, God tells us of things that he's going to do for us. Often, you go, you go to the, the Bible, one of the things that I was challenged with in the first year of my Christian life is uh, a man made the comment, he said, there are over 3,000 promises, and there may be even more than that. I don't know how he came to the, to the figure of 3,000, but he said, there are over 3,000 promises in the Word of God that you can take personally. He said, how many of them do you know? And that really challenged me. It challenged me to, 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 to look into the book and to, to find promises. One of the times I find that I am the most diligent looking for promises is when, when there are times of trials and when there is a season where you have some difficulty and there's some purging going on in your life and, uh, and, and you're looking for something to cling on to. Uh, that's, that's when the season of fulfillment comes into play. And, and notice that God tells us that when these promises come to fulfillment, they come to fulfillment in their season. In other words, when God sees fit for them to come to pass, they will come to pass. It's not our timing. It's his. Let me give you some examples of that. Uh, there, there are some promises in the Word of God. For instance, there's the promise that says give. 
and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. And we often, we often uh, apply that to giving, and, and rightfully so, you can apply that promise to giving, but it applies to a whole lot more than giving. It, it pro- applies to loving people. Uh, when you need, if you love others, when you need love, God will bring it along. Uh, if you're merciful to someone, uh, and then you need mercy, and God will make sure that, that the, the mercy comes along. So give, and it shall be given unto you. Now the question is, when? When shall it be given unto you? In, in God's timing and in God's season. When he sees fit, not when we see fit. Uh, here's, here's another one. The Bible says, vengeance is mine. I will repay saith the Lord. Over in Romans chapter 12, it, it tells us that we need to give vengeance to God and that we ought to be a blessing to those that are our enemies and those that curse us. Uh, we, we ought not to take things into our own hands. And the Bible makes a promise. God, God's promise is, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. As long as I take my hands off of it, As long as I step back from the thing and give it to God, God says, I will repay, saith the Lord. When? In his season. Not in my season. I I just this last year spoke with someone who, a good friend of mine, and and, uh, about nine years ago, was really, really deeply hurt. There were some folks that, just put his heart through the, the, the ringer. And uh, for some time, he was a little bit puzzled because it seemed like uh, everything was going good for those folks who, who though he responded in a proper way, uh, they just did a number on him, were mean, were nasty, uh, did things in a very unchristian way. And he's looking at the thing a year later and nothing happens. And two years later and nothing happens. And three years. And he'd given it to God. And, and that's, that's sometimes very difficult and tough to do. Nine years later, the thing comes back and bites this individual very, very deeply and very, very, very uh, harshly. Uh, and the person came back to me and said, you know, uh, I found out that it's God's timing, not my timing. And he wasn't necessarily rejoicing over the thing, but just kind of scratching his head over over it. You go into the Old Testament and you go to the book of Psalms, and there are a lot of Psalms that deal with, you know, why, how come the wicked have things going well for them, and those that are trying to do right seem to be struggling. Well, because vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. But he does it in his, in his season, not in ours. Uh, the Bible says, uh, be, be not weary in well-doing, for in due uh, season ye shall reap if ye faint not. And sometimes we, th- we got this idea that, you know, I go ahead and I, I do something right, and I, I sow some good seed, and the next day I'm going to reap. Well, it might not be the next day. It may not be the next week. It may not be the next month. It may not be even the next year. Uh, it may be sometime later. But you will reap if you faint not. Uh, that's a Bible promise. When will you reap? In God's season. And again, I think this goes back to that, that, that season of blessings uh, he'll, he'll allow you to reap at a time when you need it the most. And, and, and he knows when, when we're the most needy. The Bible says that the, 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 the day of Christ is at hand. And we ought to be patient, waiting patiently for that blessed hope. You know, I, I remember back in the, particularly back in the 70s and 80s, there was an awful lot of talk about the Lord Jesus Christ coming back. 
And uh, uh, there's a lot of talk around this place about, about that same thing. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll never see the year 2000 because at the year 2000 before that, if, if not 2000 before 2000, the Lord's coming back. Well, guess what? It's 2024. He's not come back yet. But he's going to come. When's he going to come? In his time and in his season. And he will fulfill that promise. We just simply need to be patient. Um, you know, the, uh, the, there's, there, there's two things that are absolutely necessary when it comes to the season of fulfillment. And the two things that are necessary is, number one, you've got to have patience. You've got to be willing to wait for God to do the work, for God to, to, to fulfill the promise. And then secondly, you've got to have faith. You know, uh, I've, been, I've been waiting for the Lord's coming for over 50 years, because it's been, been more than that since I've trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior. I got saved, I got saved 55 years ago. And for 55 years, I've been waiting for him to come back. Now he's not come back yet. But you know what? One day he will. And that's a promise. And all God's people said, amen. amen. That's, a, that, that's a good promise. But you know he's going to come? He's going to come in his time. In fact, the Bible says, in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. In other words, it won't be your timing, it'll be his timing. So these are, these are three seasons that, that God brings a, 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 across our lives, uh, into our lives. It's the season of fruit, fruit bearing. And that's to allow us to fulfill uh, our purpose and to fulfill potential. But understand, it's not all of the time but if we are faithful during those in-between times, God will allow us to bring forth fruit. We saw, we saw some fruit this, this last week. We saw three young girls come to know Christ as Savior. Now listen, there was an awful lot of work. There was an awful lot of prayer. There was an awful lot of preparation that went into it. And if I'm not mistaken, they all got saved in the same night. I believe it was Thursday night. And, um, uh, you know, it, it just... All of a sudden, boom, there's, there's the fruit. Uh, but the fruit isn't going to, going to always be every single day. But we need to be faithful in the in-between times so that that fruit can occur. The next one is a season of showers. And, uh, you know, if, if you're struggling, if you're having some difficulties, don't worry. God knows and is touched with the feelings of your infirmities. He knows what you're going through. And he knows exactly when to be, bring the blessings. I've, I've watched it. One of the blessings of being in one place for as many years as I have and being in one church, I've been able to watch lives and I've been able to watch families. And uh, I've seen you folks go through some stuff. And you really have. Some of you have, have really been, been through some trials and some difficulties. But I've also seen on those same people that had the great trials and the great uh, uh, difficulties, I've also seen tremendous blessings poured out. I mean, super, super big uh, buckets of blessings poured out upon you exactly when you need it, exactly when you need it, because God is always faithful. And then the, the third one, what we just looked at, is the season of fulfillment. And it gives you... It, the season of fulfillment gives you confidence in, uh, in God and in his word and in his promises. The Bible says we need to be patient and we need to believe God and he will bring forth what is necessary for us in his season. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, we pray that you'd help us to appreciate and understand the seasons of life. And uh, Lord, what, one of the things that's necessary is that we be patient for you to do a work in our lives and realize that your timing is not always our timing. And your thoughts are not our thoughts and your ways are not our ways. But Lord, you are always faithful. And just like we'll always have a summer and we'll always have a spring and we'll always have a fall and we'll always have a winter, the seasons of God always come to pass. Lord, 
what is so absolutely necessary is for us to abide in Christ, uh, for us to be consistent, for us to be faithful during the in-between times so that you can have your will and you can do your work in our lives. God, uh, I pray that, that each, each person who's in here who's saved this morning has a desire, and that's a desire to bear fruit. But in order to be fruit bearing, we've got to be consistent. There's some work that needs to go into that sometimes very short, those very short seasons of, of bearing the fruit, but the fruit will come. We just need to be diligent. We need to be consistent. We need to be faithful. Lord, there may be someone here this morning who does not know Jesus Christ as their personal savior. They, they're not absolutely positive today that if they were to die, that they go to heaven because they don't know for a fact that all of their sins are forgiven. Lord, I pray that this would be the day that you would touch their hearts and help them to see the greatest need that they have in their life today. Though they may have many other needs, the greatest need they have is to trust Jesus Christ as Savior. You have a desire to save their soul. The whole reason why you came to this earth as a man was so that you could die on a cross and be the perfect sacrifice for our sins and pay for all of our sins, past sins, present sins, future sins. Lord, speak to hearts this morning that may not be saved, that they might understand that they, they need a Savior. And I pray that at the invitation, they might come forward, take my hand and say, Preacher, I need to be saved. And uh, they might come to know Christ as Savior as we put them with someone and they deal with them about their soul. Whatever the case might be, whatever need is represented here this morning, Lord, as you speak to hearts, may we just simply say yes to you and respond in this invitation. May decisions be made for the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We're so thankful that you're our Savior and our God this morning. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all